Today, I want to talk to you about my experience using Get Go car sharing. So this year, I got my license again, and I was so happy that there was this service called Get Go because me and my wife were discussing like buying a car, and we we're like, "Oh, that's frightfully expensive." And we were wondering, like, how do we do it? How do we get a car now? How do we drive the family around? And she said, oh, there's this service, there's this app called GetGo. So we got GetGo. Basically, you sign up on the phone. It's an app on the phone. They verify your face, your national identity card in Singapore, and so on and so forth. So one night, I excitedly sign up for GetGo. I book the first car for the next day. I show up to the car with my motorcycle, park the motorcycle in the car park, walk over to the car, and the app cannot read my face. I'm like, yo, I just signed up for this app last night. And I'm going crazy with the customer support on the chat, which they have. They don't even allow calling, so it's chat. So I'm typing furiously into my touchscreen phone. I'm telling them, like, look, I don't know why it's not recognizing my face. I'm not sure if it's because I looked down when I was trying to register for the, for the service because there was a screen that said we're going to do a face check. And I was like, great. But it didn't say the moment you click next, it's a face scan on the next screen. So I thought there would still be like another layer of, you know, sort of waiting before we could get the face scanned. But then the moment I hit OK, then it goes to the next page. I'm looking down at my phone at night like you do. And it's like scanning. And I'm like, yo, I'm like dressed in a singlet, like not even a singlet, but a Persian traditional dress we used to sleep. <laughs> it's more like a nightgown, really. Not a gown all the way, but, you know, just the, the vest. And I'm like with these spectacles, I've not shaved and it's scanning my face. And so the next day when I was at the car having trouble, I was thinking back and I was thinking, is it because I was unshaved or this morning I've shaved and I don't know what it was, the clothing, I, I'm going crazy with a support rep. They're like, sorry, we need additional verification. This is the only way to do it. Scan your face. I'm like, this is my face. This is my IC. This is me. I'm a public figure. I mean, I've been in the media 27 times. I've acted on primetime TV. You can check my socials. It's me. There's, there's nobody else with my name in Singapore. And they were like, we're so sorry, sir. We got to do this this way. And it didn't happen for a long time. And finally, something wired in my brain and said, maybe just look down at the phone like you were doing in your bedroom last night. And so I did it that way. And then it approved the scan. I was like, hallelujah. And we had a great time. And since that day, of course, that was just a minor hiccup. I'm not making this video to bitch about that. I'm making this video to say this is actually a very good company. And so that was just the start of it. And after that, we've had many fun-filled weekends thanks to this service. Um, it's very simple. You use an app. It unlocks the car. It locks the car. It's, it's as straightforward as it could possibly be by just using an app. They have a great customer support team with you within seconds or minutes. Not even minutes. Seconds, really, when you click live chat. Uh, when you stop your car somewhere and you need to talk to them about something, which is uh, there's a problem in the car. Or the car can't start. Or because you're not used to that car model, you don't know where the, the foot brake is. And by the way, it's on the left side. For those of you who are not sure, if you've not been driving auto cars for a while, it's on the left, uh, Nate, your left foot, where it would be next to the brake. Uh, some of them have this brake where you push down, like the Honda Shovel Hybrid, and then it stays there, and that's the hand brake. And then to release it, you go all the way where you will, you press, and you let go, and it comes back out, and then your hand brake is released. For other cars, like the Sanyong, uh, I believe it was Tivoli, or the Sanyong Stavik, a bigger car, you also push down, but this time you don't push it to release. There's a little lever near your steering wheel, just on the underside, on the left side, you pull that, and the foot brake and the hand brake releases. And so, yeah, there's like minor hiccups like that or minor problems you might be having. Of course, these cars are used by a lot of people, I imagine, because they're quite famous now. So maybe, I don't know, something's broken or whatever. You can report it. The craziest thing we had happened was we were going along the expressway really fast at the speed limit, like it's allowed in Singapore, like 90. Suddenly, a stone flies across the windshield and cracks the windshield. And me and my wife were like, what, <laughs> what just happened? And so we, uh, that, we deemed that an emergency because the windshield could break at any time. So we stopped it in the road shoulder and the expressway and wrote to them and said, hey, look, this is the problem. And they have a system where you can upload photos with all the problems. So there's like zero, like lack of proof or whatever. Everything's pretty cool. I like to commend them on their customer service. Yesterday, this customer support rep called Mitch saved me a lot of time. I'd left my cash card inside one of the cars from the previous night. And uh, I'm not sure if this is their normal protocol or she went out of, of the way, but because it was the second time it was happening to me, she helped me, I think it was because of that, I'm not sure. The team helped me contact the customer and the, the customer found the cash card and put it in the glove compartment. Or at least they said it was going to be in the glove compartment, but it was near, you know, that little area where you can put your phone or keys near the gearbox, so it was there. And so I went back at night once that customer had finished using the car, because this car was parked near my house. 
And they have these designated car bots around the city. And so I retrieved that card and I tested it in another car I rented this morning. And thank God it was still $18 inside of the previous day was $20. So I didn't lose that $18. And that's one thing I want to commend them on and really say thank you to Mitch. Uh, she wouldn't give me her details or whatever, so I could thank her personally on social media or whatever. I, I guess that's company protocol, but I'm sure the, the company will send this video or the blog article to her or praise her during one of their meetings or whatever. So thanks so much for that. And also all the rest of the customer service support reps as well. They've all always been very helpful. And sometimes, I, I'll be honest, I lose my cool at them sometimes because the hot sun combined with some part of the car not working or you not being familiar with the car can really lead to, you know, especially when you're on a rush somewhere. And it's, let's face it, it's probably something important you have for the day. That's why you would rent a car, right? Or at least I would, because otherwise I'd probably just take my motorcycle. Uh, but if I'm taking the car, I'm booking the car and I'm spending extra money, it's something important. So I really appreciate their quick support on these important days. So thanks so much. And I also want to talk about Johnson Lim, the co-founder, because at one point at the start of my journey with them, when I was having too many problems, I was like, you know what? Let me just write to the founders because I myself am a founder of different small startups and ventures and things. And I've also worked in startups. So I'm not really a proverbial employee who's like scared of talking to founders or CEOs or whoever. I mean, I've, I've talked my way into a meeting opposite Farhan Akhtar's music manager in India. So those of you who don't know who that is, you can Google him. He's a, like a big Bollywood star. So I was like, let me just hit up the founder or, this, or the CEO straight away. So I did a LinkedIn search, I found him. And I said, hey, I, I'd like to have a call or a chat and just drop you some feedback. What do you think? It seems like a good company. You guys seem like you're trying to do your best. But there's a little, there a few hiccups. And there was a hiccup, there was a hiccup about a voucher and a content writing uh, issue, I guess because they kept giving us free vouchers. So what, so what they have is they have this ESO card. ESO is a petrol company in Singapore, but those of you who are not aware from overseas, they leave that card inside the car. So you use that card and then you go top up the fuel. They pay for the fuel, but then they give you back a voucher for thanking you for filling up the fuel for the next customer, right? And I guess they let the customers do the refueling. So this is their way to thank us. But then the voucher said $6 ESO voucher or SO fuel voucher, something along that line. What they meant was, here's a $6 voucher for get go for the car service because you helped us to fill up the SO fuel. But it said SO fuel voucher or SO voucher, something to that effect, which left me confused. Are you giving me a voucher to top up SO fuel? If so, that can't possibly be to top up your fuel because you're already paying for your fuel with your SO card that you give us. So then I'm thinking, is that SO voucher for us? Like for my private use with my own car and bike? Or what is it exactly? Like, so it's not clear. So I told him and he was like, oh yeah, that's right. It's not clear. It's, we need to tell you guys that that's a thank you for filling up the SO, but the voucher is for use with GetGo. So I believe they fixed that. And now it says something else in the vouchers section. But I wanted to say thanks to Johnson and the whole team for having an open culture and an open mindset of taking feedback and then using it. Point is that he was open to listening to feedback. And I think that's a wonderful thing. I've worked in startups my whole life. And even in the music scene, when I started in 2009 and I graduated from Arts College in 2013. And since then, the stuff I've built up, like the Singapore Music Facebook group, which is now the largest Facebook group for Singapore music, and a few other things that I've done, I've always been sort of in startups and have a very guerrilla marketing sort of mindset. And uh, basically, I guess that's just the entrepreneur blood running through me because my dad, I think at the age of 20 or something, he had like one restaurant that he started with a table and four different chairs. <laughs> at least that's the story I hear. <laughs> Maybe my mom and dad are saying that to make it sound more glamorous than it is, but I don't think they're doing that. Uh, so the truth is I'm a bit of an entrepreneur myself. Yeah, I think that's really cool. It's, you know, startup culture, startup vibe. I think that's the way the whole planet's heading anyway. And I think when we do that, it's good that we humble ourselves a little bit and think that we're all just friends and humans helping each other. And now I'm going off into my spiritual side, but more on my spiritual life coaching on my other channel, Three Part Human, which I'll link here um, for self-care, self-help, spirituality, and uh, all the deeper metaphysical healing and God, spirit guides and that type of stuff on that channel. But this is my personal channel where I just enjoy lifestyle and I enjoy life and I go through life and I share that with people. And uh, yeah, I just want to say thanks to GetGo. Um, that's a great job you guys are doing of the culture that you embrace, the politeness with which you guys are speaking, even though customers may be speaking to you rudely or going crazy. 
um yeah thanks so much that's all for this video if you like this video please give it a like please subscribe and please turn on the bell icon for more notifications leave me a comment if you have any experience with get go any problems any good stuff uh, all of it and I guess help the company grow because they're in a bit of a startup stage and if you're wondering what this stuff is behind me I'm actually at Centerpoint right now outside Justco which is another one of my favorite places to work I've rented an office here before I've hot desked here before and sometimes I just use the service by switch to do like um sort of pay as you go hot desk it I think that's amazing like you go anywhere around Singapore and you pay and then you get a desk that's just like that should have been the first thing they did but yeah I'm glad they've worked that out that just makes common sense at this point uh, given the mobile and startup nature of everyone's work. So thanks so much, everyone, and see you around. And uh, if you'd like me to review anything for you as well, you can let me know. Um, it seems like I'm starting to head into doing this full-time, along with my ID job, where I help you increase your reach on LinkedIn and socials and so on. So it's all a good time. It's all very flexible. You can reach out to me. I'm not hiding. I'm on all socials. My website, my email address, it's all there. So take care, and see you guys in the next video. Thanks, and bye-bye.